Murray, come and share what you're sharing with us in the prayer meeting about what God was showing with you. You can have a seat. Yes, in the prayer meeting this morning, um, we were praying and, and I just started to see people coming in. People coming in, people coming in, and I could see this church full, hand-raised, worshipping the Lord. And where, where God is exalted, where he is honoured and glorified, there the people will, people will come. I, I heard of someone say when they were witnessing on TV, they said, if you're asking someone to come to church, tell them to come where they can find God. But I know, um, look, I'm just reminded of years ago, um, a worship leader called Ron Canoli. He was, a, he was a professional entertainer in America and he came to the Lord and he started leading worship in this church and with a couple of years they had 7,000 people come in because of the power of the worship. <laughs> and the presence of God. We want the presence of God. Above all, we want the presence of God. It's the presence of God that we hunger for in our midst. That's just so beautiful, so beautiful. I encourage you, when you're praying, take a hold of that vision. Take a hold. Take a hold and believe God. The presence of God bringing people because we want to come into his presence. Wonderful Jesus. Jack, come and check communion with us in this. For the stewards, please serve. Thank you. As I was in worship, I just got a bunch of things I felt like they were just from the Lord. I had an idea of what I was going to share about, but I think he, he had another one. As uh, you stare at this bread and this wine, and as it gets handed into your hands, I just felt like the Lord said, just don't let it lose the meaning. Don't let it lose the meaning that it carries for what God did on the cross. This is not just a cracker and a bit of wine. This is the change of life. I, as I was praying, I felt like the Lord was saying his, his sacrifice on the cross was as if he got down on his knees and engaged for you. And then as he engaged to you, as he asked for your hand in marriage, and the moment you stepped in faith and believed what he did on the cross and said, I, I do, I, you said yes to being his bridegroom, to being his, to being his bride in his presence. And I just felt like the Lord was saying, don't let it lose the power. Don't let it lose. Don't let it become a, a habit of, yes, let's just take this bread. Let's just take the wine. Let it be a symbolization of what Christ has done for us on the cross by dying and paying the price of the ultimate sacrifice for love and that we can take hold of that and know that we are in transformed life, that we don't need to hold on to a fence, that we don't need to sit there and be a victim, we don't need to be the ones that are always crying for me, that we can be the ones that identify in a, in a holy God that loves us and find our identity in him so that we know that we can walk in the fullness of him for when we are finding offense, that we know that we are finding pride within ourselves and not looking at the cross and seeing a humble God who died and paid a price for us and then realizing that he, when he was in the midst of getting tortured and suffering, that he looked at them and said, Father, forgive them. And if Jesus the almighty or holy God can pay a price that he did not deserve and still show sympathy and mercy to the one doing it to him on his behalf, then we can be a people that take a hold of his nature because by the grace of God he chose to reveal his son in us. And that was by his mercy and by his grace. So I just felt very strongly just to say, don't let this just lose its power. And as you take it today, know the transformation that you have taken in your life, that he has transformed you to be a son, that he's predestined you to be in his sight, holy and blameless, that we can take a hold of that and never be in offense, that we can cast our anxieties, we can cast our cares onto him because he cares for us and lay aside everything and just focus on him. So, Father, I pray 
But as we take this bread, there's going to be a birthing in our hearts. There's going to be a birthing of stepping into something new, Father, of that fresh love that you have for us, to take us back to the first love that we once had for you, God. I thank you, Jesus Christ, that you died for us, you paid a price for us, and you love us, you predestined us, that you looked at us before the foundations of the earth and said, I want to die for them because I love them. And God, I thank you. I thank you for this love, and I thank you for your precious presence. And God, I thank you that it's going to wrap around us all today. So in your name, we honor you and we love you. Let us eat and drink. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that one on? On? Thank you. Wonderful Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence today. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. So grateful. This week. <clears throat> been very interesting uh, just to see what's happening in various places. You know, and, and uh, there's all sorts of, we live in changing times, who knows that? You know, very interesting times, changing times. But I tell you, God has never changed. He, he, he has not changed. One thing we know that God is, has not changed. He is still a good God. He's still on the throne. He still loves us. Jesus is still our saviour. The spirit of God is leading in it into a fresh season, into a new season. And so there's lots of change happening worldwide. And we've got to have eyes to see what God is doing. <clears throat> Hello? Like you know, that's why I got Mary to share this morning. We've got to have eyes to see what God is doing. And, uh, you know, so Tuesday nights we pray and believe God to help us, to show us, to take us into that place where we see what God is doing. At, at the prayer meeting. I encourage you in your own time. Allow God to show you what he is doing. Not just looking at the news and what's happening here and there and around the world, but see what God is doing. So we, we, we come and we pray and we believe God. We've been praying for some time now for a real move of the Spirit of God in Australia and he's encouraged us again and again with words about that. But I believe that God, because it's new, he's going to do it a new way. It's not necessarily going to be the way it's happened in the past. So I'm asking God, show us how to partner with what you're doing. Show us how to partner in the ways that you're doing it. And uh, because it's a new season and a new day, it might be the same as it happened before. Nevertheless, he hasn't changed. He's still on the throne. But he'll lead us in the new path. He'll lead us in the new way. Uh, many times we've heard a prophetic word come through that there's going to be a new sound. And the new sound of, of, of worship, a new sound of, of singing and, and I don't know what it's going to sound like. I haven't heard it yet. It's you. <laughs> but I'm seeking God for it. I'm asking. I, my prayer has always been, God, if you're moving, I want to be a part of it. We don't want to be sitting on the outside looking in. We're asking to be a part of what God is doing. So I encourage you, pray, press in, believe God. We're going to take our tithes and offerings and love God with our finances. And... Uh, it's one of the, the great areas of stewardship that God gives us. And uh, as we enter into maturity of, of the, our stewardship with God, then God allows us greater stewardship. And it's just a principle with finance, and it's one great area that we can show that as we bring our tithes and offerings and love God with that. Bring a tenth of our increase, bring a tenth and bring an offering, and, and uh, God makes way. So we want to walk in a Personally, I want to be a better steward. Master God, show me how I can be a better steward than I have been in the past. There's always increase in the kingdom. I want to be a part of that. So Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for making way. We honour you with our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. Thank you, steward. Last week, we were supposed to have a fellowship day on Thursday. And the weatherman said it was going to bucket rain. And it didn't. 
I looked at the radar coming over. It looked like it was going to rain, then it didn't. And then there was another lot coming over. I thought it's going to be raining, and then it didn't. And so I went down to the spit where we were supposed to go to see if anybody else was there. I couldn't find anybody, but I had a nice walk in the lovely sunshine, and it uh, didn't rain till four o'clock that afternoon. We're going to try again this week. <laughs> we're going to try again on Thursday. Uh, down at the spit, we'll have a, a cup of coffee to stay for fish and chips and have some lunch if you want, just to get some fellowship happening again within our, uh, our body, which will be wonderful. So this Thursday, 10 a.m., we're going to try again. And uh, the rain can stay away this time as well. <laughs> wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Last week, uh, we just had such an incredible uh, testimony from the Ringo that God moving in his family. I've been hearing testimonies all week about the things that have been happening here and there. Oftentimes, you know, there, there, there are just some things going on that we don't see, we don't understand. We've got to work with God. That's who we are. We're people of the Spirit. Like Mari was saying, this is a church with, that understands the, the spirit world and how to work with God. God is the Spirit. We are, we're not just a social club where we come and have a bit of social time, although that's part of it. You know, and we've been without that for quite a while. And uh, we are going to be people who press in to bring the answers of heaven to earth. When Jesus prayed, he says, Lord, let your kingdom in heaven come to earth. And I believe that we should be bringing the answers of heaven to earth, that, that earth is transformed by the answers of heaven. So we bring not just a rescue when Jesus comes back, but it brings a reformation, a transformation of our nation and our culture. We are to bring the salt and light and bring the, the, the influence of heaven to earth. You know, the Bible says in John 1.14, Jesus is the word of God made flesh. He is the word of God that was, was transformed into a flesh being. And we've looked at it, you know, last couple of weeks how the angel spoke to Mary and the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and she birthed Jesus. And when the seed of the word of God comes in us, the same thing happens, that Christ is formed within us. Jesus is the word made flesh. When the word of God comes to us, in John 6, 63, just a couple of chapters later, Jesus said, my word is spirit and it is life. His word is spirit. So Jesus was the word made flesh, but when he spoke, things happened in the spirit world. His, his words were spirit. But what happens with us is when God speaks to us from the spirit, and it can be all the different ways that God speaks, whether it's a, a, a vision or, or you know, an impression in our heart or we're reading something in the word of God that comes alive, that spirit, life, flows to us. The Word made flesh is speaking and the Word becomes present. The Word becomes flesh again when we speak the Word of God. When we speak what God is saying, there is, there is presence that comes. His presence. We've been singing that in songs this morning and, and just entered into the, the, the beautiful holiness of His presence as we're singing the Word of God. Jesus. The presence of God comes. When we speak the word of God, it becomes presence, it becomes flesh, it becomes manifest. And so as we work with God in this, whenever we say what he is saying, the words become present and the enablement to become all that he has just said. Luke one thirty seven says, nothing will be impossible with God. In the Greek, it, 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 is, it says the word nothing is, if I can say this right, upas rhema. The rhema is the freshly spoken word of God. And the word nothing in the Greek includes the freshly spoken word of God. If I can say it like this, and you know, it says nothing will be impossible with God. The word impossible is adunatio. Not very good at Greek, so you've got to get how I get it, which means without ability. If I can say it like this, no freshly spoken word of God will ever come to you 
that does not contain its own ability to perform itself. That's what it literally means. Let me say that again. No freshly spoken word of God will ever come to you that does not contain its own ability to perform itself. When God speaks, it has the ability to create and to perform and to build and to become flesh. So our role as co-laborers, co-workers with God is to hear what God is saying and become his mouthpiece so the word becomes flesh again. There is power in the word. Let's look at this one. In, in James 1.21, it says this, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Our, you know, we know the parable of the sower and our heart is the soil. But it's the word of God has the power. We come with humility and meekness. Meekness is uh, power control, under control. And, and humility is, is having the right attitude before God. And so that's the, the condition of our heart, the soil, but the power to transform is in the Word. The Word implanted in us saves our soul. It's the, the power is in that seed. That's where the power is. It's in what God says. It's the, the power is not in our heart. It's the soil. We're, we've got to understand that there's two realms here. There's a, there's a temporal world, a very natural world, and there is a spirit realm that is a greater realm. It has greater authority. It has greater power. It has greater ability. God is a spirit. John 4 verse 4, you know, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. But that spirit being that is God, he spoke and the worlds were created. That there is a greater power in God that upholds this temporal realm. And when we get into agreement with that kingdom, with what God is saying and begin to speak what God is saying, it creates in this temporal realm. These, these two kingdoms, these two places, the power of God to, to work. It's so important that we learn how to connect with God. You know, it's a, it's a heart relationship with God. It's a connectedness. And as we spend time in the, in the place connected with the Father, in that place of prayer, that's the place of authority and power. You know, it's not a, just a matter of being busy. We can get busy doing Christian stuff and disconnect. It's not a matter of just being busy, it's, it's, it's getting connected with God. And out of that place of connectedness, then we, we work with the power of God and with the life of the Spirit and with the, what God does in this natural realm. It's hearing from heaven. It's working with what he gives us. Sometimes, you know, difficulties and circumstances come our way. You know, the, the trials of the righteous are many but the Lord delivers us out of them all. So anybody here, you know, just recently, you know, facing a little bit of a something or other, you know, that most of us really, <laughs> stuff going on. But what we've got to do is spend enough time with God to hear God's answer, to see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So it's not talking about you know, just, oh, I'll get born again and everything, kingdom of God will appear before me. No, it's about understanding how to hear from heaven and connect with God and bring the answers of heaven and decree the answers into the problem. You know, uh, when, when Peter got the revelation that Jesus was the Son of God, and, you know, I think sometimes, you know, he had... Uh, put in mouth disease, he's always stumbling over himself a little bit somehow or other, just like you and I mostly. And um, <laughs> Peter had this revelation, Jesus, you're the Son of God, when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? 
And I can just imagine Jesus, you know, he's there and, and Peter says, I believe you are the son of God. And Jesus is going, blessed are you. Finally, Peter, finally, finally, you've connected in that spirit realm and learned to hear from God like I'm trying to tell you. You've finally learned how to hear, how to get that revelation from God. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because you got this revelation from God. You finally got it. Oh, you finally, and it's the same for you and me. We've got to get into this place where we hear from God and get to hear from answers from heaven and begin to work out of that place. I am seated with, in heavenly places with Christ. Jesus said that to his disciples. Can you imagine that first time when, when Jesus was with his disciples and he said, I'm in the heavens with the Father. And they're looking at him like this. Okay? You stand right here in front of us, but you're there in the heavens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of people can live their whole lives without knowing this other realm, without understanding this realm of spirit, without stepping in to the throne room, without hearing from heaven. We are designed to hear from heaven. We're designed to hear from God. We're designed that way to mess with God. But sometimes people are just switched off. Like, what are you talking about? Some people are so naturally minded that unless they can, you know, touch it and taste it with their natural senses, it's beyond them. But God wants us to be people of the Spirit that understand how to work with God, how to connect with the heart of the Father, how to hear the answers, how to see them. Let me give you a few examples. <laughs> By faith, Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Let's have a look at that one. Not 13, 1 to 3. <sighs> Not quite the right one. By faith is this. We understand that the world was framed by the word of God. By faith we understand. The understanding comes after faith. Sometimes we want to understand first. But there are progressions, there are lots of progressions in the kingdom. By faith we understand. Understanding comes after faith. It doesn't come before. Sometimes we try to figure things out. We're praying, God, I need this. Will you give it me this? Give, it to, give me the answer, God, I need this. And we try and figure out how it's going to come. How are you going to do this? God, I need it this way. But God doesn't do that. He says, by faith we understand. So faith comes first and then our understanding. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Remember the Roman centurion who had his daughter was unwell and he asked Jesus to heal her. And Jesus said, okay, I'll come with you. And he says, no, you don't have to come. I'm a man under authority and you speak and it'll be done. And what was Jesus' reply? I have never found such great faith. Why? Because this man had understanding. He saw his faith through his understanding. He had understanding and it meant that he had faith. Understanding comes after faith. So when the faith comes, then our mind catches up. We can understand how this is going to happen. But you don't figure it out first and then have faith. It doesn't work like that. That's not faith. And sometimes there is also, I won't go into the trial of faith, that's a whole other process of how that works and how we work with God and get the answers of heaven. And, and sometimes there's a trial to those things. But without the trial, it's not faith. There's progression in many things. Kingdom of God, 
is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's a progression. We get the righteousness of God, which allows us to enter into peace, and out of the place of peace, then we can have joy. If you lose your peace, it's hard to find joy. If you lose your righteousness, you get no peace. There's a progression. Line upon line, precept upon precept. So there are many things that there's a progression with God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope is a confident expectation that good is coming. But faith is now. Now faith is. So hope is the confident expectation for the future. But faith is something that comes now. Now faith is substance of that expectation. Are you hearing this? So there's a, there's a progression. Faith, it, it sounds funny, but faith can lead us into a place of hope. And hope is a conflict, it's coming. I know it's coming. Because I've got faith. It leads me into hope. And hope does not disappoint. Romans 5, 17. 6 and 17. All right. So both of those verses talk about hope. But faith, it is the thing, the substance that we have from God when God speaks. And we come into agreement with that word of power when he speaks, and then it flows. But faith comes by hearing. We've got to hear first. We've got to get faith that comes. When I pray, I, I pray and I lift my desire towards God. You know, uh, what's that verse in Philippians? You know, in all things give thanks, letting your requests be made known to the Father. So I bring my request. But what I'm looking for from God is that fresh word about my request so then I can have faith for it. Are you with me? So then when I, have, when I receive from God that fresh word and when I get that faith, then I begin to speak what God says and it creates that answer. God has said this and I declare it and if I become the mouthpiece of God and the flesh forms, it, it becomes... Uh, are created in this temporal world, the answer of heaven gets formed in this world and we begin to see the answers flourish. Are you hearing this? Tamari brought that word this morning. She was hearing from God because that's what we're believing for. And, and so I'm declaring, now I've already had a couple of prophetic words about it for the church, that this is going to be a season of fruitfulness. I'm believing for it to be a fruitful church and fruitfulness means multiplying what we have multiplying who we are, multiplying the presence of God, the tangible presence of God that would be so powerful that God comes just so powerfully by His Spirit and by His presence and by His power that people are drawn, not because we're doing something fancy or because we've got the latest light show or because we've got tea and Vicky, but because the presence of God is here. Because God is in our midst. That's our desire. I'm believing for that, that the tangible presence of God will, will be so emanating out of all of us, out of all of our meetings, out of our young adult meeting on a, on a Sunday night. We've just had some incredible times there with the presence of God. It was like the first night we were there and <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, we launched that. The tangible presence of God, the glory of God was in that place and people were being touched and the joy of heaven was flowing. And, and you know, I'm hungry for that. Hungry for God to do that in our midst. Hungry for God. And it comes and see that you can drink on that. I can drink plenty of that. I can drink and drink and drink for the presence of God. Hungry for that. We come in and you get filled and refreshed and it's outstanding. That's why we come. Not because some met pastor or the preacher has got some fancy word, but because God comes and his word it comes and the anointing comes upon what is spoken. Not because of, you know, I've got some intellectual thing going on, but because the Spirit of God is in it. By the way, Neil will be preaching here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so Neil's going to come and, and preach, and then he'll bring the presence of God like he does. And it'll be fantastic. So that's, you know, so what, what, what is God speaking to you in your heart? What are you seeing? What, what is the desire of your heart going? Are you seeing the answer? Are you, are you getting into that place where the answer of God comes so powerfully? Let's have a look at this one. Uh -huh. 
when we pray for the sick, we can pray for, from hope. But we've got, to, we've got to see them already healed when you pray for the sick. You've got to see God's answer for them, on them, and the power of God and what he wants us to do. Let's look at uh, Dorcas, Acts chapter 9, verse 37 to 40. Have a look at that one. It happened in those days that she became sick and died when they'd washed her. They laid her in an upper room. Next verse. And since Lydda was near Joppa and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. And Peter arose and went with them. And when he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them, and always oh, isn't it, you know, tragic. And Peter put them all out. Why did he put them out? Yeah, because, you know, he, he wanted to get into faith. Listen to this. Deb, can I use you? Okay, I won't lie you down. I'm going to pick it up. Okay, here's, here's Deb Dorcas. Just examples, you know. It's like I'm not putting that on you. I'll just give you as an example. You're, you're, this is an act, okay? You're the actor. I'm just showing how this works. So here she was, carcass, kicked the bucket, no longer had to do. She was, you know, kicked off this mortal coil, you know, got the final rigor, whatever you want to say, she's dead. And they're going, oh, isn't it tragic? She was such a good lady and look at the clothes she made me buy. <laughs> you know, she won't let me wear cheap jeans. I've got to buy the good things. You know, she's, such a, she's so lovely and we miss her so much. Peter said, get out. Put them all out. Look at this picture. Peter prayed. Where was he praying? He was not looking at her. Because it said, he turned. He was praying. He was praying, not looking at her dead body, but looking towards heaven, looking for the kingdom of God's answer. What are you doing here, Jesus? What are you going to do with this one? You can raise her from the dead. I am looking for your answer. And he was looking for the for what God wanted to do to see the answer of heaven, and then when he had prayed, he turned because he had the answer of heaven in his heart and he spoke the answer of heaven. Woo! If they scared the life back into you. Yeah. <laughs> and the power of God came on the word from heaven and brought life to you. That's how we pray. Getting the answers of heaven. Speaking it. And declaring it. So then it's, it's totally different from how some people pray. Oh God, if it's your will. Well, no. Get the will. Find out what the will is. Find out. Hear from him. And then you can begin to decree as the mouthpiece of God, speaking with the life of God, and so there's no longer any timidity or insecurity. It's not about a, a desire or just some uh, uh, theological viewpoint. It comes from the faith that's flowing through you with the nature of Christ in you, the same Spirit of God in you that raised Jesus from the dead, and you can begin to speak and act as the body of Christ and, and let the power of heaven flow and, and life came back into her. She was raised from the dead. See, that's how we walk with God. We're co-laborers, we're co-workers, and God speaks. But it comes from 
that fight, you begin to agree with God, agree and fight, getting the answers of heaven. You know, I mean, you, you've seen Neil and I and others operate on an altar call and, and you'll, you'll look for it. This is how it works. It's simple. You can do this. It's not just a, the fancy pants up the front of the church. You can do this because you've got the same spirit in you. You've got Jesus in you. You've got the Holy Ghost in you. And, but you, that, it's a simple process. Right? Laying on hands, God, what are you doing? And you decree it. And the power flows through that. And the life flows. You and I are carriers of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I have come to give life and life more abundantly. And if we need anything now more than any before, it's life. We need the life of God. We need the hope of that. We need the nature of Jesus flowing through us to a broken world. I was at a training yesterday to do RI in the school and uh, um, I'll share this a little bit with you. A few years ago, I was praying about Sunshine Coast, what are you doing here? And I saw all these pastors with little cast nets and they're throwing their little cast net out and catching a few fish, a few minnows and a few, bit of, a few little bait fish and each pastor was throwing his cast net out and one over there throwing his cast net out and saying, God, what have we got to do? And God showed me that if we work together and put a net right across the river but we don't care who gets the fish, then we'll catch all the big ones. So I was in training, this training team yesterday for the RI and the lady that's running it got up and said, God gave me a dream. And she said, I saw this net go across the river and she's holding on to the best we can and there are maybe a couple of dozen others. How many couple of dozen others have there been, Alex? A couple of dozen others, three, four dozen and other people there in the training. A lot of them, your age. A few of them, Alex's age, but a lot of them, you're my age. Mature people. And she said, I saw this net going across the river and I'm holding on to the best of my ability. But yet, I saw this net go right across the river, catching all the fish. And she said, that's our eye. And I thought, she's right. Because if God has already shown me that, shown her that, we don't care who gets the fish, the statistics are that most people who get saved are young people. Because they're fresh, they're right. So Alec and I were going into the school, that was in the last year, yeah, and we're going to believe God for the harvest. And you know, they might not come to us, but they're going to go into heaven. <laughs> and it was confirmation for the vision that God had shown me. He said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So when two people get the same vision totally independently, I think, hey, this could be God. It could be God speaking. It's so powerful to get a confirmation. It doesn't matter who gets the harvest, but God's going to get it. That's what matters. We'll work together. We'll believe God. We'll stand in agreement. I'm believing for it. And I trust you to believe with me. And we'll see God work so powerfully. We'll see it when the presence of God comes so tangibly. You see it the beautiful presence of God. People are drawn to the presence of coming and be touched by God, you know, and, and allow God to get around about their heart. They have God to transform and change. They have the word of God, the power of that word to transform and save their souls and the life of it to flow over every one of them. We're seeing young adults gather, hungry for the presence of God in, in our hub that just can be a bit unpleasant at times. One of the things that we're praying for, and I'd appreciate you praying with us and agreeing with us, we're believing for air conditioning for that place so that it can be, you know, we can go in there without feeling like we're going to wash up rag <laughs> sometimes when it's hot. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at different options to see how we can do that. We're believing God to move forward because uh, <clears throat> one of the visions that quite a number of us have had, uh, last year we were praying at a prayer meeting. I'll give you another example of hearing from heaven. And uh, Karen, young Michael, we should pray for Michael. Father, we lift Michael to you and we pray for your mighty power right now. We see your hand coming upon him. Raising him up in Jesus' name. 
Let your hand of power come upon him to heal him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Karen was sharing this vision that she saw this, the, our hub, you know, a quarter full and then half full and then totally full of young people. She had a vision of that. Last week we were there and, and uh, one of our, our young adults came. She said, I've got this dream from God last night so I thought I'd better turn up. And she saw the hub first filled, quarter filled and then half filled and then totally filled of young people. With God speaking. God speaking. Our role now is to stand in agreement with God and to decree what God wants to do. He wants to move upon this uh, you know, these young adults, these, these people who carry something fresh of God and his lives have been transformed. Every one of them here uh, have got a testimony of transformed life. And so we're believing God, moving forward. We're going to stand in agreement with what God is doing. Hello? And God is trying to change lives. And out of that we'll see a changed community. And out of that we'll see a changed sunshine coast. Out of that we'll see a changed nation. Out of that, God is going to, we've got to leave a legacy that's going to go on for generations and generations. God, we believe in you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're in agreement with you. Father, we're in agreement with you to the best of our ability. And I pray that you'd continue to speak and continue to encourage, continue to impart faith. Lord, every word, every freshly spoke word that you speak has the power to perform what you say. And we believe you, Father. We thank you for it. We love you for us. We exalt you for us. In Jesus' marvellous name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. While I'm praying, I think there's somebody wrestling with, with uh, kidney, there's kidney issues, kidney stones, kidney pain, something going on in your kidney. Holy Ghost, I see your power coming to heal and transform. There are, there are other people here. Somebody's got some issues going on in your left lung. There's something happening in your left lung. And it's like a... a I don't know if it's a blockage or a clock or something. There's something going on in your left lung. There's, an, there's other people here. And uh, I, I see somebody in, the, with their, in, in their joint, somebody with their, a right knee causing them pain. It's like that thing is, 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 it comes back to occur and God wants to break that in Jesus' name. If there's somebody else and you get like this dull, almost migraine headache that, that you know, God wants to break the power of that. There's, there's, there's other people here who, who Shayla Bahia is as as a laborious. God wants to heal. Ha <laughs> ha, Holy Ghost. Anybody here with some of those things? Holy Ghost. Yeah, you? Come on. Come on. You do? Just say this, please. Say this. Come to you. Or we find this. Oh, the kidney. Oh, we speak life and health. Let your power flow into its kidneys right now. There it is. There it is. We're just breaking those things up. Breaking it, breaking them up. I see them being broken up. Can you see it with me, church? Can you see what God is doing? Look in the spirit and just add your faith. Begin to decree it. God is breaking up these kidney stones. He's healing, healing. Cool. Holy Ghost. Release it. Release this power. Release your power. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Those things are just dissolving totally. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let the power flow and let the anointing, and they will just be gone. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Allow God to be infiltrated and influence your world. Allow Him to come into your relationships, into your families, into your circumstances. Believe God. The Spirit comes. We've got a good God, hey? Thank you, Jesus, for your word today. Thank you for your anointing, your presence. Thank you for that it's by your spirit, Lord. It's by your work. We honor you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody would like prayer, I'd love to be able to pray and agree with you and uh, just add my faith to you in Jesus' name. But you are people of faith. You are. You're wonderful people. Appreciate you so much. Look forward to having fellowship with you on, uh, on Thursday. Come if you can. We've got tea and coffee. And uh, what is this?